we take questions? Yeah, and, and if we don't get questions, we can always so, talk. Yeah, we can talk more. No, 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 we no, want questions. We want questions. We and and it, open it up. I mean, I think, yeah. I think we're willing to take questions on anything discussed today or any of the issues yeah. Yeah. Uh, that were raised today. So, uh, so feel free. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. So I want to go back to uh, Dr. Brooks' point about the, the family and how there may not be an evolutionary desire to jump in and save your, your kid from the pool who, who's drowning. But I think in terms of people in general, part of me wonders if there's an element of tribalism that is inevitable because even before the capacity to reason or philosophy, there were still, people still formed groups or humans still formed groups in order to survive. So I want to ask all the panelists, is there an element of this that is inevitable, an element of tribalism that is inevitable, or does that ultimately reduce back to the individual? Anyway, I just was wondering about that. I mean, I would say there, I don't think of it as it's inevitable. And certainly in a modern context where you're choosing, parents are choosing to have kids, it's a chosen, and it sh should be at least a chosen relationship. From the child's perspective, yeah, you didn't choose to be born or conceived. But it's, so I don't think of it as at all as an, there's no necessarily tribal relationship in human affairs. When you're talking about individuals that have the power of choice and some recognition that they have a power of choice and some ability to exercise that power. Um, they are, it often can descend into a tribal kind of, the, it's our family right or wrong, but there's no reason it has to start like that. And I think for many families it doesn't, it's not like that and never was like that. I think tribalism is a default. It's what people default to when they don't reason and when they don't recognize themselves as individuals. That makes sense. Because, because if you're relying on emotions rather than reason, because that's the only choice you have, right? It's either emotions or reason. Then it, it's, it's, if, if you can't think, then life is scary. And I think people get scared when they're not reasoning. And the tribe is a way for them to, to, to get comfort, not to eliminate the fear, because the fear still exists, but to, to, to get comfort from other people who, who are afraid like them. So I, I, I think, I don't think it's genetic. I think it's a default of not thinking and, 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 and therefore looking for a group to shield you from reality, which is now the enemy because you're not using your mind to actually engage with reality. Yeah, the only thing I would say, and it's kind of murky even in my own mind, but I would say something like this. To the extent that there's any physical or physiological, just natural inclination in human beings to be tribal, that's kind of pre-tribal or pre the concept of tribal. And as that's we talk true. about tribal today, we're talking about making a choice as, because we have free will. We choose who we associate with and on what grounds and even how we think of ourselves. And you know, what do I identify with? So in that sense, I completely agree. It's, there's nothing inevitable about our being tribalists. And I think it's dangerous to, to, I mean, it's good to raise this question and this issue and to try to sort out what I've only said murkily, but I think there's something to be, anyway, I won't repeat myself. Thank you. Great. Yeah, so there's a lot of discussion about dealing with the parent-child relationship, but almost all from the child perspective. And so, you're on, since you're a parent of grown kids, I wonder uh, if you could share a few thoughts on your perspective on that as a parent that might be helpful for all the rest of us who aren't thinking of it from the perspective relating to our parents. I was trying to avoid doing that. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I echo some of what Anka said. Being a parent is really, really hard, and, you, you second get, and, and it's really hard to know if the way you're treating your kids is right or not. You're constantly second-guessing yourself. It's really stressful and hard, so it brings out a lot of emotions which are challenging. You're learning on the job. There's no course you take in advance. Um, it's the hardest thing in many respects. It's the hardest thing. Certainly emotionally, it's the hardest thing you will ever do. And then, as Harry always reminds us, uh, these things have free will. And, uh, <laughs> and so there's no guarantee that even if you do the best job in the world, they will actually turn out to be good human beings. There's zero guarantee of any of that. 
Uh, so it's, it, it can be quite frustrating, particularly as, they, as they're older. I, I always tell, I mean, I don't know, I, I, I think of it as this way. You can't have kids with the idea of, yeah, one day they'll grow up and then I'll enjoy them because we'll have this great relationship. Because you don't know that. You better enjoy the kids when they're kids. You better like babies. You, you, yeah, Harry's turning away. Um, <laughs> I've got a good Harry baby story. Um, <laughs> you better like kids. You better enjoy the process of being a parent and engaging with the kids. Now, I, now my kids are going to watch this and say, oh, my dad hates us now. So, but, 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 but no, you better enjoy that because there are no guarantees in terms of what's going to happen la later on. Now, hopefully... You have a great relationship with afterwards, but, but they might, you might not, right? You might not, or, or might be not as good as, you, you can't have this trade, I'm sacrificing for 18 years so that one day, you know, I'm investing for 18 years so that one day I have a great relationship. That is, that is really, you will, you, you know, it's, it's, and, it, you know it's, and again, it's hard work. And I, I think, unfortunately, most parents go into it not realizing it, not expecting it, not thinking about it, not planning for it. Uh, it, it really has to be something you consciously think about, plan for, and, and, and do purposefully. I say this when my first kid was an accident, but, um, but we intended to have kids, so the timing was more the accident than, it, than, it, than the intention. And, and, and we gave it a lot of thought, and I read tons of books, right? all of Montessori's books and all kinds of books. Some of them were good, some of them were crap, but, but you have to take it seriously. It's, it's a... It's a massive, massive investment of money and time and emotional energy, more than, you know, and, and, and thought and everything that's engaged with it. And then, of course, when they, when they become teenagers and there is this natural tendency to, they want to be independent and they don't know exactly how to be independent. So there's definitely a rebellion. Um, and, and as well as you raise them, at least my experience is, there's definitely, there's, a, there's this period where they, they want to rebel. So sometimes it lasts very short, sometimes it lasts a lot longer. And, it, and it's, again, it's very, very challenging to figure out how to deal with that. And then when, as they become adults, my kids are adults, they're older than you guys, what is your relationship exactly with them? Again, they can behave like kids and you don't want them. As a parent, you don't want them. You want them to be independent. But on the other hand, you want to help them. It, 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 all of these choices are not easy, and I'm sure I've made a gazillion mistakes uh, in the process. Uh, and you have to constantly reevaluate. And then are they any good? You know, you have to judge, just like you as children have to judge your parents, you as parents have to judge your kids at some point. You know, what, what kind of relationship do you want to have with your kids? And that's not necessarily easy to do in terms of, in terms of being objective about it, right? You've, in a sense, invested 18 years of, you know, and, and there's a, an emotional investment, and it's, it's, it's very difficult. And then if you have more than one kid, it's, it's judging them as individuals and not as my kids, right? They're always, who do you love more, right? Daddy, right? It, it's, it's, but you have to be objective about who do you love more and what is your relationship with each one and how do you, your relationship is not going to be the same. They're two different individual people, in my case, too. You know, so it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's an amazing experience. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's the greatest thing. It's, it's amazing. It's a great challenge. It's exciting. I enjoyed the whole parent thing. I enjoyed them at every age. I love babies. Uh, I love little kids. I, in a sense, I enjoyed them more when they were babies than maybe when they were teenagers. Um, but, you know, I, 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 you have to, you have to, it's an incredibly satisfying and, and, and wonderful, fantastic experience. And you have to, you have to really embrace it and, and love it. But, but it is, it's a challenge. Like everything in life that's worthwhile, there's a challenge involved. It's not that it's hard. It's just challenging and interesting and exciting, and you have to figure stuff out. And you make mistakes, and you get up, and you make it better, and you're constantly engaged with the activity. And I think the choice not to have kids is if you don't want to do all that, and, and that's a legitimate, rational choice. But it's, um, so I don't know. That's some thoughts on it. You could probably say a lot more, but... Uh.